Shotlister. Today, I'm going to be walking you through some of the new features that are in Shotlister 5, which is very exciting because Shotlister has been completely redesigned from the ground up, all new code to give you this entirely new experience. And so there's a lot of new features I'm going to walk you through, and there's some new ones coming. And here we go. So the first kind of most major difference with Shotlister, which is kind of invisible, I can't really show it off here, but is that now CrewSync, the way that we sync files with Crew, is entirely instant. So every single change, no matter how small, if you change setup to from seven to six, as soon as you do that, it is synced with your collaborators on all your devices instantly. There's no longer a need to hit publish or do anything manually. It's basically just like using Google Docs. Um, it also has asynchronous syncing, which means if you are on your iPad or your uh, iPhone and you make changes but then you lose internet connectivity you can keep using it and then as soon as you restore connectivity it will push all those changes um, one of the other huge things is now an unlimited amount of people can be all making changes to the same project at the same time just like Google Docs so um, that makes it really easy if uh, you're working with other collaborators or you have an assistant working on future days. So instant sync is a huge thing. Now also right now I'm using Mac OS as you can see here, but all these features are also on iPad and iOS. Um, Mac OS is now free. So you can use 90% of everything that Shotlister does absolutely free to a maximum of two projects. Um, and then Shotlister Pro is a subscription that we have that gives you some extra bonus features. But Mac OS is no longer something you have to purchase. You can have iPad, iOS, uh, Mac OS, all of it for free and use the app, which is pretty cool. All right, now let's dive into some of the more specific new features. So if I go down here into um, a scene by clicking on this right here, uh, one of the new things is you can actually see the estimated time of a shot right here in scene mode. You used to only be able to see that in shoot day mode, but now like say you create a new shot and you call it arc, just for example, and you, while you're building your shot list, you can go in and say that's going to take 60 minutes. And then when you add them to the shoot day, all those estimated times are already in there. Um, the next thing is that we also have added scene parts. So now you can have eight, you know, you can add a letter like when you're doing revisions and you can also have parts. Uh, this is something that happens a lot when you have one scene that has, say, two locations. So um, if someone was in a living room watching a TV, part one would be them in the living room. Part two would be when you film the stuff that's on the TV. So you can just say uh, part one like this and you can see now it says eight part one um, and we can create you know, a new scene and we can call this one eight part two. Um, and that's really helpful um, when you're breaking apart your scenes. And that means that scene eight can have two different locations. So you could say this one could be park exterior um, and you can break up your shots that way. Uh, the next thing is that you can have multiple uh, gear items. So it used to be that you could only have one piece of gear. Now you can have multiple ones. So you can go in and uh, add whatever you want to say, chess rig, car rig, whatever. You can add them all um, to each shot. So that's a nice new little feature. The next ones are related to cast. It used to be that um, you could only add cast numbers to the scene. So here you would have your, your different cast for the scene. You can now add cast um, to actual shots. So it used to be you used to have to user, use the user category to, to add your shots. No longer do you have to do that. I can just turn off the user category here. Um, you actually have a cast um, category for every shot. So this is really helpful. You can say Indiana Jones is in this uh, shot. This one, say, is, is the two of them. Um, and all the changes that you make here are automatically added to the scene metadata. Um, some of the other cool changes we've added are actually the ability to resort and change the cast list very easily. Um, so say I uh, put in Marion, I can drag her up and put her here and it automatically changes to two. Um, so that's really uh, super simple and very cool. All right. The next thing is custom categories. Um, it used to be that you could only have one category called user. Now you can create as many as you want, um, and they're a lot more um, flexible. So you could create a category, and it can just be an empty text field, or it can be a number, or you can even create your own toggles. So an example would be, let's call this, um, what should we do? Let's Sometimes 
I create a toggle called kids, which helps me know if there's a kid in the shot. Um, and then if you click here, you can pick your own icon. So you can just pick whatever you think looks good. I might put an exclamation mark and hit save. And now we've got this new thing called kids. And then you can come in here and you could create another one called props and create save. And now you've got a category for props and you click done and those are now added here, uh, which is really cool. And you can see uh, that new little exclamation mark icon is there and it just acts like a flag, just like these flags here for um, visual effects and special effects and all that type of stuff. So very cool that you can create as many custom categories as you want. Uh, one of the other new features, which was highly requested, is that you can't do it on Mac OS, but on iOS and iPad, if you click the storyboard icon, you can also now draw. So you can use your pen and draw storyboards right within the app, which is really cool. Now heading over to shoot days. Um, one of the biggest requested features was the ability to um, automatically detect the sunrise and sunset times of scenes, not having to put them in yourself. So if I create a new shoot day here um, and I uh, pick a date, I can now add a location. So for example, I'm recording this in Vancouver, so I'll just say Vancouver. It knows the date, um, where you are, and it automatically, you can now see these are grayed out, that's because it's automatically figured out what the sunrise and sunset times are. So you don't have to do any of that looking up anymore, which is very cool. You also now notice these pin icons. What are those? Um, well, we've added a big new feature, which is the ability to create notes within shoot days that don't move when the rest of the day is shooting. So if I create a um, sunrise and I can pin lunchtime, for example, and now if I open this shoot day, um, you will see a few things here. You'll see the sunrise is already in there and there's this little pin icon and lunch is set at 1 p.m. And so now as I you know, add a few things to this, um, I'm gonna add a few shots here to this day. Um, you'll see that sunrise stays there, you can't drag it, that's locked to that time. And lunch stays at 1 p.m. And you'll see this new thing called a gap, which basically means you're estimated to start this shot at 11.25, you're gonna shoot for 70 minutes, which means there's room for 25 minutes of stuff before lunch. And as you're shooting and you're in live mode, um, this gap will continue to flex and show you what you can put before lunch and what after. So this is 30 minutes. If I change this to 20 minutes, you'll see that it now moves up ahead and now there's a five minute gap before lunch. And so it's really helpful to keep either lunch or other things like kid pumpkin times or um, anything you want, like losing a location at a very specific time, you can now pin times. And any note that you create, um, if you go up to the note button and go down to the bottom, you'll see here that you can, under settings, pin any note. So you can say appear at, say, let's just do, um, 2 p.m. You'll see that that note appears there. It's now got a gap between lunch and it's got this pin icon. So pinned times is very cool. Another small detail that you can now do is you can have simultaneous shoot days. Um, so why would you want to do that? Uh, you can see here that we've got July 4th and July 5th. Um, if I change this back to July 4th, um, I can now have two shoot days running at the same time, which is very cool because that allows you to have um, shot lists for multiple units. So you can have several different live modes happening at the same time. You can give edit privileges to the people that are on the other unit and you can be seeing both shoot days go at the same time. Very cool. Now the last um, new little feature here that we wanted to highlight is that some people uh, requested that they're not a big fan of live mode. You know, some people really love the fact that the app changes your schedule live as you go and pushes things around to give you a kind of up to the minute uh, view of how you're doing. But sometimes you just want a simple shot list that you can check things off. And so we've added a new feature uh, here. If you click on scenes or go to your project settings, um, you can actually turn off automatic live mode, uh, which basically means that uh, when you um, start a shoot day, it will not automatically turn live mode on, and it explains to you that you can mark shots as complete manually. So you don't have to be in live mode to mark shots as complete anymore. So for example, on uh, iOS, all you do when you're looking at a shoot day, if you wanna mark something as complete, is you swipe to the right and you'll see a little check mark. Here on Mac OS, you can just right click on it and mark it as complete, and you can see it adds a little check mark there. You can mark it as incomplete. And so you're, 
we've basically allowed for people that prefer not to have live mode to still be able to check off their shots, um, which basically will keep everything exactly where it was. So it won't change over time. All right. So those are some of the new features. There's a lot more coming, but just wanted to give you a taste of, of the cool feature requests that people have been putting in and we've been adding them to the app. Um, always you can contact us if you have new features that you really want to have and look forward to seeing all the films and shot lists that you guys make. Um, remember to join us on the Discord if you have any ideas. And that's it. Happy shot listing.